After training hundreds of hockey players since 2014, I can tell you this. Not a single hockey player exists who wouldn't like to get faster. But are you actually training and eating in a way that makes you faster? My experience says no. If you're not as fast as you want to be today, then I can guarantee it's because you're making one or more of these three dead serious hockey training mistakes I'm about to share with you. The first speed killing mistake is you fail to get strong. I've said it a thousand times already, but I have to keep repeating it because it's true. The average hockey player doesn't matter if you play junior, D1 college, pro or men's rec league is not strong enough relative to his body weight. Strength forms the foundation for speed development. Of course, skating technique, edge control, all that matters a ton, but that's what you improve on the ice with your hockey coaches. I'm talking strictly off the ice here and off the ice, you must get stronger. Your deep barbell back squat should be closer to double body weight and trap bar deadlift around triple body weight for me to consider you strong enough. How many hockey players do you know who can lift these numbers with textbook form? Can you? No? Then you've got a ton of work ahead of you. Second major mistake involves turning your sprint training into conditioning. Think for a minute, why are you doing sprints? To get faster. Getting faster is all neural, meaning you have to do it in a maximally rested and fresh state. Otherwise, you're just going through the motions but not getting any real results. And that's the case with too many hockey athletes. Your so-called speed workout includes 10 50 meter sprints with 60 to 90 second breaks. That's not speed training. That's conditioning. The volume is too high and rest periods are too short. So as your workout drags on, you just get slower and slower because you're getting more tired after each sprint. How does running slower make you faster? It doesn't. It just teaches your body how to repeat a submaximal effort more times, aka conditioning. Third big mistake, being too fat. Just like the average hockey player isn't strong enough, he's also not lean enough from a body composition point of view to play his best game. Imagine skating with a 10 or 20 pound weight vest for a full practice or game. What's going to happen to your performance? It's not going to improve, that's for sure. And that's exactly what carrying extra body fat on your frame does to you. It hampers your speed and recovery between shifts. Forget about exploding off on those powerful first few steps and beating your man to the puck. You'll be the one getting left behind. And by the third period, you have no gas left in the tank when the game is on the line. Which is why I spend so much time teaching my hockey players about proper sports nutrition. And those who come to me rocking a disgusting dad bod with zero muscle definition and a fat belly, which is the case way too often for my liking, I put them on a diet that sheds the fat off their frame. You can't be a fast athlete when you're a fat athlete. Thank you for watching. If you want more great hockey training and nutrition tips like this, then hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.